Chapter 3, Odd Number Problems. Number 1, the question is, why is it necessary to have more than one method of measuring central tendency? I've decided to go ahead and type this answer out since it is kind of extensive. Um, first, the answer is the purpose of a measure of central tendency is to summarize a distribution with one value. We prefer that that measure be the mean, however, nominal ordinal data are qualitative. Um, meaning that we don't have numbers to work with. This prohibits us from calculating the mathematical center or the mean of that type of distribution. Additionally, nominal data cannot be ranked from highest to lowest. This prevents us from finding the middle score or the median. Below here, I've um, listed the scales of measurement and the measure of central tendency that is applicable. Nominal data, we can only report the mode, the most frequently occurring score. Ordinal data, we can rank values and find the center value to report the median. Interval and ratio scales of measurement or distributions enable us to report the mode, median, and mean. Um, as we've learned that if the distribution is symmetrical, then all of those values will be equal. Um, all are applicable, but we prefer to report the mean simply because it's the best understood measure of central tendency. However, if a distribution is skewed, then the ideal measure of central tendency would be the median. Number three, we're given a small sample distribution and we're asked to calculate the mean, find the median, and report the mode. So we begin by calculating the mean. Our equation that we've learned for a sample is the mean is equal to sigma x over n. Okay, so um, let's replace variables. What do we know? Let's find out what n is equal to. So if we count how many scores we have, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 scores. So n is equal to 9. And now we need to calculate the sum of x. Sum of x, we enter in our calculator, and we take 3, add it to 6, and we add all of those numbers, and we should get um, 51. Okay, so let me just uh, re that for just a second. What I'd rather just put is the sum of x is equal to 51, and now we can replace that variable. So this is equal to 51. And now we have what we need to calculate the mean of this particular sample. So 51 divided by 9 gives us 5.666. And we're going to um, set a standard of rounding three digits um, using the third digit right at the decimal to round. So we would report a final of 5.67 as the average score of this distribution. Notice that the mean of 5.67 is not one of our values in our distribution and that's that is very possible that when we calculate the mathematical center it is not going to be one of our values simply because the process requires that we take the sum of all scores and divide by how many we have. Next we want to report the median. And as we learn from our reading that the first step in finding the median is to find the center of the distribution. Um, well, the first step, excuse me, is that we need to rank the scores in order so that we can find the center of the distribution. So we would rank these scores, three being the lowest and occurring three times, and then five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. So I've just taken this distribution right, and ordered it from highest to lowest and make sure I have nine values. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to make sure every score is accounted for. And then given the definition of the median, it's the middle score um, or also known as the score in which 50% of the scores are above and 50% are below. And so we can see this one quite easily. Um, we can eyeball the center where here we have four scores, here we have four scores, and also can be understood as 
of scores are above and 50% are below. So the median for this distribution would equal 6. And then finally the mode. The mode as we understand it from our reading is the um, value that has the highest frequency or the most popular score. So if we look at our distribution here now that they've been ranked it's a little easier to determine that and we find that the value of 3 3 is the most commonly reported score or most frequently occurring. Um, given the um, difference in these scores, the, the mean, the median, and the mode, we would conclude that the distribution is not symmetrical because they are not equal to one another. Number five, in this, uh, using this frequency table, we're asked to compute the mean, locate the median, and report the mode. So we'll consider these scores and their frequency. Uh, we begin by calculating the mean of this sample, and we know that that requires us to find the sum of x and divide by n. So let's replace variables, figure out what n is equal to. N when we're looking at a frequency table, we've learned that n is equal to the sum of f. So you can consider every value in the f column as a participant or an individual in which we've collected this data from. So if we take the sum of f, this column here, adding 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2 plus 2, we should get 13. So our sample size is equal to 13. I'm going to place, replace that variable. And now we are asked to um, calculate the sum of x. Again, many students have the tendency to come over here and sum up this column. But that would be incorrect. And the reason that would be incorrect is if is because you would assume that all values occurred once. Um, so we know that just taking the sum of x is not appropriate. We have to account for multiple occurrences as in the case of the score of 6 and 5, 4, and 3. So let's create our fx column here. And we are going to multiply our, our x value of 8 times its frequency of 1 and we get 8 and then 7 times 1 we get 7, 2 times 6 we get 12, 5 times 5 we get 25, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 3 is 6. And now in this column we've accounted for multiple occurrences for x values of 6, 5, 4, and 3. Um, so now we can take the sum of x, which is the same as saying the sum of fx, right, if we're working with a frequency table. So let's add up 8 plus 7 plus 12 plus 25 plus 8 plus 6 in our calculators, and what we should get is 66. Okay, so we can replace this now. So our calculation becomes um, the process of taking 66 and dividing by um, 13 and we get an answer of 5.076 and I'm going to round that to 5.08 okay so now we found the mathematical center of this frequency table and next, the median, we know that we must order the values, uh, rank them from lowest to highest. And there are a couple ways that we can do this, but I'm going to show the very basic um, method of finding the center value by taking the consolidated data in the table and stretching it out. So, in other words, reconstructing what the list of original scores um, would look like. So we have three, maybe I'll write it down here so I have a little more room, three occurring twice, right, I'm looking at the frequency, four occurring twice, 
five occurring five times. One, two, three, oops, <laughs> three. That's a five. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six occurring twice. One, two. Seven occurring once. And eight occurring once. And make sure I have 13 scores. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, and we know that 13 is an odd number, so I have odd number of scores. And consequently, I'm going to have one value in the center of the distribution. Remember from our reading that if you have an even number of scores, it will be the average of the two center scores that will yield the median. So in this case, if I have 13 scores, I know that I'm going to find the value where we have um, six scores right above that score and six scores below, and lo and behold, Right, we have um, five in the center of the distribution. Again, we have half of the scores below and half the scores above that particular score. And um, since we had five occurring multiple times, we actually see that um, as the center representation of this distribution. So we can report the median is equal to five. And then finally, the mode, our understanding is the center value, excuse me, the value that has the highest frequency. And in this case, as we saw, once we stretched out the data, that that value is also 5. And now comparing these values of um, the mean, the median, and the mode, um, the mean is slightly different, but it's close enough where we would conclude that this is a symmetrical distribution that we're working with, where the majority scores are in the middle, um, and represented by a center value, and we have fewer frequencies in the tail of the distribution. Number seven. In number seven and the problems um, following, are asking that you solve for certain variables. My recommendation is that you focus on given information, identify that given information, identify the most appropriate equation to use to solve the problem, and then replace variables. So, for instance, we have um, a population that is equal to 15 scores, and the sum of x equal to 120. What we're asked to find is the population mean. So to do so, let's identify what that equation is equal to. So population mean is represented by mu. Mu is equal to the sum of x over population size. And at this point, we can now replace variables. So we have 120 represents the sum of x. 15 is the population size, and we now we have a, a, a very simple problem to solve. Um, 120 in your calculators divided by 15 gives us 8, and therefore we would conclude that the population mean is equal to 8. All right, number 9. A population with a mean equal to mu of 8 has a sum of x equal to 40. How many scores are in the population? So we want to find out what is n equal to. Whoops. What does n equal to? Again, um, we identify what we're given. We're given that mu is equal to 8, and the sum of x is equal to 40. And we know we're um, using the process of calculating the mean, so we can use that equation to solve for n. We know that mu is equal to the sum of x over n. If we replace variables, we know mu is equal to 8. The sum of x is equal to 40. And our n is unknown. All right, so we have um, the basics of what we need to 
um, utilized to solve for n and just using basic uh, algebra skills um, we can isolate n we would know that we would multiply by n over here and as a result that cancels this n out on this side and then to get rid of 8 over here right, we divide by 8 and that's going to cancel over here and let me just rewrite this to simplify so n is equal to 40 oops, it's not 48, 40 divide by 8 simple calculation, n is equal to 5. So we've used again um, variables identified, the equation that we needed to solve for the missing variable, we used algebra to rearrange variables to isolate the variable that we were trying to solve, and we get our final answer. Number 11. In this example and um, those to follow, illustrate the effects on the mean when we change a score, add a score, subtract a score um, from a distribution and look at the differences we see in the mean of that distribution. So again, let's identify what we know and then use the proper equations to solve for what is missing. So our original sample has six scores and the mean of that distribution that sample distribution is equal to 13. Given this information, let's identify what all the variables are equal to. So what's missing is the sum of x. We don't know that at this point. So given our equation, sample mean is equal to the sum of x over n. If we replace variables, we know that we would see 13 is equal to the sum of x over 6. In order to solve for sum of x for the original distribution, we would take 13 multiplied by 6. Again, that's just using simple algebra. Multiply by 6 here, multiply by 6 here. Um, this cancels out, and we have the sum of x is equal to 13 multiplied by 6 in your calculators we should get an answer of 78. Okay, so again, that's what the original distribution looks like, and it's important to make sure you have all the variables so you can um, track the changes of what's happening. Now, it says if one person with a score of x is equal to 3, if that's removed from the sample, what is the value of the new mean? Okay, so I'm going to partition this off. What are we doing? We, we x um, equal to 3 is removed. Okay. We know that subtracting a score is going to have an effect on the sample size and also the sum of scores. So we know we should expect um, a change in our sample size and the sum of x. So let's identify what that change looks like. So if we have an original set of scores equal to 6, right? we removed one score, so the new sample size new sample size is equal to 5. And again, recognizing that the sum of x takes into account all scores tells us that if we are removing one in, in one Equal, one score equal to 3, we should expect a change in the sum of x. So sum of x new is equal to the original 78 minus what that score was. That score was equal to 3. So we get a new um, summation of scores equal to 75. And now, given these variables, we are able to calculate what the new mean is equal to. So mean new. Right. Our equation is the sum of x new over n new. Again, I'm just putting these labels to make sure we don't confuse it with the original distribution. So we know that the new mean is equal to 75, which is the new sum of x, over 
75, which is the new sample size. So in our calculators, if we take 75 and divide by 15, we get um, an answer of 75, excuse me, not 15, divided by 5. I was reporting the answer before um, it was required. So again, 75 divided by 5 is 15. 15 multiplied by 5, as you would suspect, is equal to 75, a good way to check your answer. So here is the answer. Our new mean is equal to 15, given that we had an original distribution of six scores. We took out one score that was equal to 3. We know that um, that process has an effect on the sample size in addition to the sum of x. Number 13. Um, we're told that we have a sample. Sample size is equal to 10, and the mean of that distribution, that sample distribution, is equal to 9. Before we consider what we're doing with that distribution, let's make sure we have all variables necessary to, to calculate or understand how the mean of this distribution was calculated. So what's missing, again, we know that the mean is equal to the sum of x over n. What we are missing here is the sum of x. So if we replace variables, we say 9 is equal to the sum of x over 10. And in order to um, solve for the sum of x, again using simple algebra, we multiply by 10 here, thereby canceling this out, multiply by 10 here, and we get the sum of x is equal to 90. Okay. Again, to check your answer, 90 divided by 10 gives us a mean of 9. All right, let's consider what we do next. Uh, we said one person with a score x equal to 0 is removed. Okay, so if we're changing the sample size, we definitely expect a change in n. And... Um, we would normally expect a change in the sum of x, but since x is equal to 0, we, we probably won't see a change there. So let's um, determine what, these effect, what the effect is of um, removing one score. So if we take one score away, our new n, our new sample size, is equal to 9. And let's consider the effects on the sum of x. The sum of x is equal to the original sum of x, which was 90, 90, minus what x is equal to that was removed, minus 0, when we get 90. Okay, and the final um, thing we need to attend to is to calculate the new sample mean. So the new mean, again, is equal to the, sum, the new sum of x over the new sample size. Okay, if we replace variables, we get a simple problem of 90 over 9, and we get a new mean equal to 10. Okay, again, we recognize that we change the sample size, we should see a change in the mean, and um, normally if we change um, the sum of scores, um, we would expect a change in the mean. This, in this case, x was equal to 0. That was removed. No change in the sum of x. Number 15. We have a distribution with 7 scores. Mean equal to 16. As we dove in with the previous examples, let's find the missing variable, in this case, the sum of x. So again, the mean is equal to the sum of x over n. We replace variables. 16 is equal to the sum of x over 7. To, to solve for the sum of x of the original distribution, we isolate the sum of x, move variables around, and it becomes sum of x is equal to 7 multiplied by 16 in your calculators. Um, you should calculate 7 times 16, and we get 112. Okay, so it's it very important to identify the original variables, all three of the variables, the mean, 
which in this case is given the sample size, also given, and the sum of x, which we just calculated. Now let's consider what we are doing with this distribution. In the second sentence is one score in the sample is changed. So x equal to 6 is changed to x equal to 20. So again, changing the value of uh, x value should result in a change in the sum of x. Um, and we will consider the change um, on sample size. All right, so we took the value of x equal to 6 and changed it to 20. We need to consider the effects on the new sample size. We didn't remove the score, add a new score, we just replaced it. So that tells us that the new sample size is unchanged. We are still working with a total of seven scores. Okay, so again, nothing was removed permanently. Uh, we just replaced the value, so we didn't change sample size. Now let's consider the effects on the sum of x new. Okay. We consider what the original sum of x is, was equal to, in that case was 112. And then we consider what we did here. So mathematically, you can just simply write that we removed 6, right? But then we added back a score equal to 20. So if we take in our calculators 112, we subtract 6 and then add back 20, we get a new sum of scores equal to 126. Okay. Knowing that, then we can finalize our answer by calculating the new sample mean. So the new mean is equal to the new sum of x divided by the new, oops, the new sample size, which was unchanged. So if we replace variables, we know the new sum of x is equal to 126. The new sample size is 7. It was unchanged. And our final answer, the new mean of this distribution, is equal to 126 divided by 7. In your calculators, we should get a final answer of 18. Okay, number 17, we have a population equal to 8, and that population has a mean equal to 16. As we've done in the previous examples, let's find the missing variable so we know that mu is equal to the sum of x over n. Replace variables, 16 is equal to the sum of x over 8. And as we have done previously, to calculate the sum of x, we multiply by 8 here, cancel these out, multiply by 8 here, and we get the sum of x is equal to 8 multiplied by 16. In your calculators, you should get 128. So we've just established what we're working with, the original distribution. Then we consider after one score, after one score from the population um, is removed, we, we are told that the new population mean is equal to 15. Um, but the tricky part is we don't know what that value is that was removed. So x equal to something is removed. Okay, let's consider the effects on um, the population size once we remove uh, score and new, let me go back here, new is equal to one less than what we started with because we removed a score, so it's equal to seven. And we don't know um, what the sum, the new sum of x is just yet using what we had um, previously utilized in the, in the other examples because we don't know what x is equal to. That's what we're trying to figure out. But we are given, unlike the previous examples, the mean of the new distribution. So again, let me label this mu nu, according to the problem, is equal to 15. That's a given. 
All right, so if we want to find out um, what the sum of x is equal to for the new distribution, again, we recognize that mu nu is equal to the sum of x nu over population size nu. So we replace variables. We're given that the new population mean is equal to 15. And um, we're going to want find out what the sum of x nu is equal to. And the new population size is equal to 7. So as we've done in the past, the sum of x nu is equal to 15. And you're taking your calculators. 15 multiplied by 7. Again, what we're doing here is multiplying by 7, multiplied by 7. This cancels out. So we have 15 multiplied by 7. And we should get a new sum of x equal to 105. That's all wonderful, but again, what we need to find out is what is the value of this x score that was removed. And as it's indicated here in the problem, our hint is compare the values of sum of x before and after. So if we want to solve for what x is equal to, Right, we recognize that the original sum of x and subtracting what the new sum of x is equal to will provide us that answer. So the x that was removed is equal to 128 minus 105. So in your calculators, take 128, subtract 105. And we should get x is equal to 23. So again, given the variables that were um, identified originally, right, we were able to find out what we were working with. We were told that one score was removed that had an effect on our new population size. Um, and we recognize it will certainly have an effect on the sum of x. Um, we were given the new population mean, which enabled us to calculate what that new sum of x was equal to. And by comparing those two summations, we can calculate what that score is that was removed. Number 19, we have a sample size of 9 and a mean equal to 20. Again, before we consider anything else, let's find the missing variable of sum of x. So we know that m is equal to the sum of x over n. And we replace variables. 20 is equal to the sum of x over 9. To calculate the sum of x, we simply take the sum of x and recognize that it's equal to 9 times 20 and we get 180. So we've established what the original distribution looks like. Let's clear that up a little bit, 180. All right, um, and then once score is changed, um, so we have x is changed, x, um, and we read further. So one score is changed and the new mean is found to be equal to 22. If the change score was originally 7, so a score of 7 is changed, okay, it's changed, what is the value of the new x? So x new, right, that's what we want to figure out. We don't know what that change was. All right, so let's consider the effects on our sample size. If we just changed a value, in, in other words, replaced it, we recognize that this sample size new is unchanged, right? We just changed the value. We didn't take out a score permanently or add a score permanently. We just changed the value of x. Then we're told that um, the new mean, this is a given, is equal to 22. So similar to what we've done in the past, let's find out what the sum of x nu is equal to. So we know that the mean nu is equal to the sum of x nu over n nu. We replace our variables. We're saying that 22 
is equal to the sum of x nu over 9. So the sum of x nu is equal to 9 multiplied by 22, and we get 198. That's the new summation of scores. And similar to what we did in the last example, we can identify what the value was, what the new x value is. In other words, the value of 7 was changed to something. We can figure that out by looking at the difference between the sum of x's and taking into consideration what we did with that original score. So we can, let me um, make some room down here. We can say that our x, right, the new one that we're trying to figure out is equal to the original, um, excuse me, since this is larger, we know that um, we'll take that into consideration. So we'll start there. 198 minus what we had with our original. We had an original sum of x of 180 minus, right, we know that the value of 7 was removed. Replace with something else and we'll figure that out here. So mathematically this is what um, the process looks like. So our new is equal to the sum of x, right, for our new distribution. And then what we did to the original, the original sum of x of 180, we subtracted 7. And now, um, again, given what's in parentheses first, so this would become 198 minus 180 minus 7, and gives us 178, 173. Take 198 minus 173, and we get a value of 25. So again, because this value is larger, we know that the score of 7 increased to something larger than that. Um, so we're going to start with that as a, a, a basis of calculating what the new mean is. And it's just a function of the difference between the sum of x's from our original distribution here and what we see with the new distribution. So we know that 198 is greater than 180, thereby indicating that that x value of 7 changed to something larger. And in this case, the answer is that it was replaced or changed to a value of 25.